We are MDT. We design, test, and create precision rifle chassis and accessories to help you shoot better. Hey, say you have an interest in getting into extended range hunting. You've been traditionally one, two, three hundred yard type of guy where you kind of hold over what we've done forever, right? And say you got a factory gun, Tika's it shoot great. Uh, say you got a 300 wind mag. Go get yourself some decent ammo. Hornady makes a bunch of good ammo with high BC bullets. It just means it's more aerodynamic than other bullets. Grab a couple of different boxes of those. The, the guys at the gun store tell you it could be good for long range hunting. Real basic. You want some sort of a scope with a turret that dials up and down. MOA and Mills are both good. Pick which one the guys around you run or most guys know. So you're talking, the, it's just a language. You're talking the same language. They both work good. Some people argue one's better than the other. They're not, they're the same difference. Now you got your ammo. You wanna to try to get your speed. Chronograph some way to get the speed. Get yourself a good 100 yard zero. So now you know the BC of the bullet, which is a number for how aerodynamic your bullet is. You got your speed from a chronograph, hopefully somebody at a gun range or someone you know has one, and you got your 100 yard zero. Now take that information. It's gonna seem a little overwhelming at first, but it's not that complicated. There's a bunch of apps, free apps, $5, $20 apps, all over the board on the app store for your phone. Get that, enter that information into your phone, go to the range and start playing around. Um, there's, there's things like air density and all those things that will come into play later. I don't want you stressing about that a whole lot now. Shoot at 100, run your app, get familiar with it, shoot at 200, shoot at 300, shoot at 400, and start to learn. That's what I did, I put clay pigeons, first time I started shooting clay pigeons at 350 and four, blown away. And I was just playing with this old app, this is a long time ago. So they've come, they've come a long ways, work your way out, and, and see if you enjoy it. I and mean, I think you're gonna see how consistent it is. If you're in a solid prone position, bipod, a good rear bag, and you're breaking shots at four and 500 yards, I think you're gonna be pretty surprised how consistent you can be dialing that scope up and down. So I would build dope cards back in the day. I'm pretty reliant on my binos at this point, but dope, the term stands for data of previously, previous engagements, I think is what technically it is. But it just means if you're gonna shoot 600 yards and you need 3.2 mils, that's my dope at 600 yards. So that's, when I say dope card, I'm gonna have, my 100 yard is my zero, I may write 200, I may not even write that down because it's just a little, it's a half mil or whatever. But I'm gonna write down my 300, my 400, my 500. When I get to 500, I'd start breaking it down to like 556, 657, because it starts, you know, as your trajectory comes out, trajectory, the farther out you go, the steeper that curves gets. So you need to fill in um, 550. When you get to 1,000, if you're gonna go real far, which I wouldn't recommend on a dope card, you wanna be a little more specific. You can 25 yard or 10 yard increments, but I would do 50s, 556, 657, 758, and I'd stop around 800 or 1,000 um, in case I saw a coyote and I wanted to shoot some rocks at far or something to test. And then I would write a 10 mile an hour column next to that. So I got my yardage on the left, I got my dope or my drop to dial my scope to next to that. And then the next column over, I write a 10 mile an hour wind. If it's blowing 15, I'm one and a half, that number. If it's blowing five mile an hour, I half my 10 mile an hour wind. So I just have a quick reference on my card. I would have these little ones, they were like little couple, three inches tall, an inch wide. I print them all off on my computer and I would laminate them and stick a couple of my vinyl harness, one in my pocket. I just have a bunch of them laying around. I think the best thing going right now for the, the efficiency of speed and being able to range, get your dope, and engage an animal in a hunting situation right now is range finding binoculars. There's a bunch from, everyone's jumping into that thing. They got ballistic engine built in. So now you move the information from your app into your binos. So all at once, you're hitting your range, it's spitting out how far it is, so you can kind of start to figure your wind. It's also spitting out your dope. It's taking into fact angle, your air pressure, all that stuff right away. So before you get those, or if you don't want to spend a, you, say you already got great binos, you don't want to spend, a, some of them are expensive, a big pile of money on all in one system. I think having hard dope's pretty good. Hopefully you've, you're understanding the difference in air pressure. If I'm here at you know, three, 400 feet in Oregon, if I'm going to go to Colorado and hunt at 10,000 feet, my bullet is gonna fly dramatically flatter in Colorado than it is in my house. But you just have to have a little bit of understanding of kind of the, the air pressure, the density altitude you're gonna be shooting at, depending on where you're traveling. 
as you progress and you start to get excited about how far your, your system's shooting with your new scope and some, some consistent ammo, uh, we've done some videos in regards to kind of the ethical, maybe ethical shooting distance. So check those videos out. The further out you get, the, you'll begin to understand trajectory, how environmentals play into that, whether it's air pressure, wind speeds, you know, updrafts, downdrafts, there's, it just, it's, a, it's a deep, deep hole that gets pretty addicting. So I would say that, you know, the one 200, 300 yard distance we've had for years is one thing. I think jumping to 600 yards, you can get very, very competent at that um, pretty quick and pretty ethically. I think once you start getting past that, um, these aren't hard and fast numbers. They're just kind of what I've done, seen over the years. You get seven, eight, 900, things start to get exponentially harder and then out from there. By the time you're shooting, tw you know, you can go out and shoot a thousand yards, by the time you're very proficient at it, you're gonna understand a lot more as the distance go out. So um, kind of break it down one to three, three to six, and 600 and out starts to get, starts to get pretty fun.